Welcome back, you're here with Nate to Wait, and this is Crossbeats Production. So, thanks for tuning in, and uh, thanks for also subscribing to my channel if you have, and also remember to subscribe if you haven't already done that. I really appreciate your subscriptions, and I also appreciate you guys uh, showing love on my channel, making comments, all that sort of stuff. Um, so, in this video, I want to show you guys what I did to create this track. More or less, the distortion on the drums is basically why I'm doing this tutorial, because um, I had somebody in my comments ask me about how do you get that distorted sound on your drums uh, like they heard on a similar track that they pointed out to me. And um, that track was quite interesting. I actually listened to it and played it and kind of got ideas from it myself as well. And that's how I kind of came up with this track. So I'll just play you a section of the track. I might play a lot of it actually just so you can kind of hear it and see what it sounds like and, and go through it. So this section here, this is the distorted drum section and there's other parts that have distortion in them as well which... Um, I recently created so I could show uh, you guys how to create it yourselves. So let me just play this to you and we'll go through it right now. So that's pretty much the track. I was kind of vibing with it. I forgot that I was playing through this whole thing. So <laughs> anyway, you hope you guys enjoyed that. So let me just explain to you a couple of things with this track. Um, obviously, a lot of these sounds sound really unique. They don't sound like the standard kind of things you'd hear on any kind of stuff that I produce, really. But uh, I I figured I would show you guys that you just, you know should you step out of the comfort comfort zone and start creating stuff that's kind of unique. And that's kind of what I did here in, in this track. And the first thing that I started with, just so I can show you guys how unique this track is, is I started with some horse trotting samples. So um, these two things here, so they're basically two samples that are like a horse trotting along the road or along a path. And I'll play these sounds to you first. So... And then the other sound.
Okay, so as you can hear, this sound here, it sounds a bit weird and whacked out, and that's for a reason, because I wanted it to sound that way, but I want to show you guys how I got that, that kind of weird, distorted, wacky sound. So, um, so first off, what I did was I put an EQ on it like that. You can see that that's kind of giving a bit of uh, increasing on the EQ, so about 2K. Um, the next, actually, I'll just show you it again. Let's just flick through that too fast. So I've got com some compression on there and expanded it as well, and I've got that 2K kind of area going on with the EQ. And then the next kind of EQ reduces that at, um, so it's sort of a low low pass at 1.48, so it reduces some of that 2K that I put in there, but it leaves some that's there. So next thing is a limiter, which just controls the transients or the peaks, I should say. And then this is what creates that phasey kind of sound. So if I play it without it, Sounds more like a horse trotting. Put the phaser on. Sounds wacky, but sort of like a horse trotting. So the next thing here was this amp fire, which gave me a bit of distortion. So I'll play it with it. Then I'll play it without it. So you can hear how much distortion it kind of gives it. It makes it stick out a bit more, and that's kind of the sound I was going for. Uh, the next thing was just this EQ to reduce some of the, the high-end stuff and the low-end frequencies and dip some out of the 100 hertz and dipped out some at the 2, well actually 1.5 kind of area. So left a little bit of that stuff that was at 2 but I dipped out some of that. So that's the first off sound that I got there. I sampled that and basically then used that as the, the starting for this track. Um, how I came up with this, uh, basically, I was listening to another track that somebody on my channel gave me a comment about on how to get distorted drums, and then I listened to the track they gave me the example for, I think I did anyway, if I didn't, <laughs> I heard a good track anyway. Um, but anyway, so this, this drum set here, I'll just play that to you so you can hear the drums, and then I'll explain to you what I did to create them, and the distortion that's on the drums as well. So I'm going to play that to you now. Okay, so as you can hear, the drums sound pretty heavy low end, and there's a bit of a clap there, but that clap is kind of reduced with um, some, well, multiband compression, EQ, and some chorus effects. So let me just go through the whole process of these drums and show you how I got that kind of distorted sound so that you guys maybe want to use this in your tracks. That's cool, you can. Um, so, um, Studio One plugins. All of these, I've used Studio One plugins, so you guys can replicate this exact kind of thing as well if you want. Um, so first off, the kick, let me just take out the, the snare, oh, sorry, the clap, I'll just play the kick. Okay, so I'm going to turn off this, turn this off, turn this off, and turn this off. Let me play the kick to you now. Okay, so that's what the kick first started sounding like. That's an 808 kick that I got out of machine. It's just a straight 808, that's all it is, and 808s usually sound pretty good, so... Okay, the first thing I did was I'll just add these plugins back on and I'll show you them in order. So EQ, so I just got rid of that low end stuff, don't need that, got rid of that. Um, this is the bit crusher that I was pretty much focusing on the most because this gives you that distorted kind of sound that a bit crusher gives you. Um, and bit crushers are fantastic for just unique kind of sounds that you get out of different stuff. So. Obviously it down samples slightly and it gives you a bit depth of 8. This is the bit depth that I used. And the overdrive function here, this is the thing that creates the distortion the most in this plugin because you drive it and it and gives that distortion. And it shows you the kind of, I guess, the bits that it's supposed to be replicating there. And it's got this clip function, I didn't use that too much, but I just left it on digital, left the gain alone, and the mix is what I, I reduced down. So I got that the 36.7 as a mix there and that gave me shall I just turn these off and I'll just show you what it did to the actual kick so you can hear that so this is the kick with the bit uh, crush okay it doesn't do too much but it does a slight amount if you listen to the bit crusher go home and do this yourself if you want to figure it out um, but bit crushes gives that little bit of high-end stuff that you just don't get from the normal kick. Then the next thing that I did though, um, this is where it gets dramatic. Um, I put a pretty heavy reverb on here, so I'll just 
put this reverb on, I'll show you what it is. So it's just a standard um, reverb that you get in Studio One. It's the room verb. I left it on the room verb standard setting default and just left it like that. And I'll just play it to you now. Okay, so it's only getting a little bit, not a whole lot, um, not a whole lot fed into there because that's the distorted drum section. So that goes on the whole entire bus. So these go to the bus, which is this bus here, distorted drums. And then I go another bus here, so drums, which goes to this bus here as well. So they both go in there. So let me just play this red light district. Now that's where it gets crazy. Okay, so you can hear there's a lot of distortion now, and that's red light district, stock plug-in within Studio One. Actually, I'll just show you the settings on that so you guys can see it. Um, so I've put this down to 60 hertz, and that 9.64, and the mix is at full, and it's just basically is at four, which is the setting of the drive, and that's on the default um, soft tube drive there. So next thing was a multi-band um, compressor, and then I'll show you why I did this, so I could basically isolate some frequencies so what I've done here is I've muted this um, band here, which is the low end stuff. I've muted this band at the top and I've muted the real top end stuff. And I left this one here in between 100 and 200. Um, I'll show you why in a second. Let me just play it to you. Okay, so it gets rid of a lot of that top end stuff that I didn't want. And this, bear in mind, this is just on an actual bus, so it's not the actual kick, but it's on a bus, so um, it does affect the way the kick sounds in this particular section of the song, but it did it in a nice way because it gave me that real sort of, I don't know, sometimes that cardboard box kick sound is good, and it worked out well in this, this track. Next thing was a compressor here, and I used that just to control the peaks. Okay, you can see that the compressor really just minimally, it's minus 0.61 dB, so just really tapping the peaks on that kick. And that's how I got that sound on the kick. So this next one here, this is where the high-end stuff comes in because the destruction, oh sorry, this is the distortion thing here. So I'll send that to the, the bus again. So I basically got these two affecting the kick. So let me just play the bit crusher on this one. Okay, you can hear that did a lot because I've got the drive really high up and this is where it's getting all of the drive for the kick. Uh, so that's the bit crusher again. Pro EQ, which I've just reduced some of that high end stuff. And some out of the 500 kind of area and low end as well. Um, next plug in, compressor, which actually isn't even on, so don't worry about that one. I'll just. <laughs> Load it on, compressor. That more or less was there to control the peaks on anything that went past. And you'll see in a second when the clap comes in, it might actually go past that compressor. So this is a saturator, so saturation. Okay, so it brings out some of that real high-end stuff again, getting it back in the mix, but using saturation to do it. So let me just play the clap together with this and I'll play the stuff that I've got on it after I play it without it. So turn that off with the kick, play the clap. Okay, so let me take this off, take this off. That's what it first sounded like. Okay, put the chorus on. So chorus setting here, I'll just remove this so it doesn't get in the way. Chorus setting, stock chorus setting, just let it on there. Just spreads out my clap a bit. Current creates a bit of distortion. Multiband compressor, now this is slapping the, the clap a bit. Takes off some of that high-end stuff. And this is sometimes what you can do rather than using EQ, you can actually just use a multiband compressor and get rid of some of the high-end stuff if you want to, and that helps out a lot when you try and get rid of it. Uh, so the next thing was this Pro EQ. Just loads up. Okay, so Pro EQ on. Okay, the clap lost a bit of volume. But don't worry about that, we're going to make that up. So, again, actually, I'll just turn all these on so you guys can hear it with it on. 
So a slight amount of reverb, a slight amount of red light district, slight amount of multiband, and slight amount of compression that's the same as on the kick. So that controls that. And then this is where it gets crazy. Okay, so that's the bit crusher again. Pro EQ, all of the same stuff, compressor, compressor there, and the saturation. So basically I've got the kick and the, and the clap going through the same processing and they're both getting that same kind of sound to it. Obviously the kick's not so much affected by the top end stuff on that compressor there for the multiband, uh, but the clap is and that's where um, that's where you can start to drive the high end stuff because obviously if you're using multiband compressors you can remove out some of that real harsh top end stuff and drive the mid-range frequencies and get that sound, that compressed, compressed uh, bit crush sound. And that's what I did to get these drums to sound the way they are. So, I mean, play them just as a whole. So as you can hear, very kind of bit crush, very distorted, but they still fit the rest of the mix. And when I play it in with the rest of it, so I mean, you can imagine an auto-tune kind of vocal on this track, and that's kind of what I was thinking when I was creating it, like some sort of auto-tune to go over the top of it with vocals. Uh, I don't know if I'll do that myself or somebody else might, but anyway, I just wanted to show you guys this quick tip, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video, I hope you guys got something out of it, and uh, also, like I said, remember to subscribe to the channel, and uh, give me a thumbs up and all, and all that good stuff that you do, so I'll let you guys go, and peace.